Oh, hello everyone. It's Crypto Granny Susie here. I hope you're all well. Looking after yourself, looking after your family, your beautiful uh, friends, your uh, partners, whatever. Beautiful children, and please do look after your animals and any other poor animals uh, out there at the moment. The heat in Spain is insane at the moment. I've never heard, never had such. Even though I'm an Australian, like I'm used to uh, in Melbourne. 45 degrees with a dry heat, but in Spain, it's like humidity plus 90% plus heat. And apparently Thursday <clears throat> and Friday, it's going to be 39 degrees and it's just so hot. It actually gives me a headache and ugh, can't handle it. But anyway, not to worry. Uh, I've got to say the food in Spain is absolutely delicious. So it's great. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's get on with live coin watch today for the 30th of July, a couple of days to the end of the month. Uh, it's uh, 30th of July, 2024, and the time in Spain is 17.42 p.m. Uh, Bitcoin, let's go to market overview first, 2.407 trill. Volume's pretty high at nearly 69 bill. Liquidity's at 5.97 bill. Uh, and Bitcoin dominance is declining a little bit, 54.23. XRP dominance is rising a little bit, 1.43. Four three five three. Keeping an eye on that very closely. XR uh, Ethereum dominance has gone up a little bit. Sixteen point two five. Tron point four eight. Link point three four one. And let's just make this smaller so we can see Solano and uh, also Bitcoin Cash, which we also hold as well. Uh, also, Solano dominance is nearly three point five, and Bitcoin Cash has got up to nearly three point. 0.3548, which is good as well. So let's go and look at the prices of crypto here, see what's going on today. There is a bit of selling, which is understandable, but any, I believe any uh, selling in this market, you've got to buy it, okay? It's as simple as that. Uh, this market's down 5 or 10%. Just buy it with your ears pinned back. Or <clears throat> the blue chips that we hold in our investment portfolio, number seven, which we've looked at, probably for 10 years or so, okay? So Bitcoin at the moment is 66.143. Did get to 73, uh, sorry, 70,000. I think it's going to go through there fairly quickly. I wouldn't be short Bitcoin for the love of money. Ethereum to me, even though it's up today, I'm not, uh, you know, I've heard, I've read a lot of stuff about Ethereum and there could be more weakness. Justin Tron came out and said he's got quite a few Ethereum and he thinks that it's going to sell off. Probably he's going to sell some on Poloniex, which he's a part of. He holds quite a few Ethereum himself. Ethereum's at 3317. Binance 576. Solano 8188, 181 181 bucks. XRP 0.6173, up 3% today. Dodge 0.12751. Ada not doing much at 0.40. Tron 0.133. AVAX 2.2669. And what else we got here? Uh, the, the bar, BCH433, Link 13.53, Dot 5.64, and we've got Matic at 0.52 and Pepe 0.000012. So let's go to our video uh, that I put together. Go for yourself a cup of coffee or a drink or a beer or whatever time zone you are in. And let's just go through some of the main news stories today. Always interesting in terms of the cryptocurrency market, that's for sure. So just let me pause this and we will go to the video I made. And I hope you like it. <clears throat> so one of the big stories that came out today was US debt crisis deepens. Apparently the national debt in the US has passed $35 trillion. It's gone up quite a lot this year. It was around $30 trillion at the start of the year. <coughs> And now the past 35 trend has got worse since COVID and higher interest rates. Uh, plus the, the budget, they're trying to, Congress is trying to increase the budget. The Democrats want to tax the middle class and the high earners more. But the reality is expenditures are outstripping uh, what the US is earning in income from offshore as well as uh, internal, right? Uh, Mr. Biden's administration aims to reduce the deficit by this amount over a decade, three trillion, but I find that hard to believe. I think the Bitcoin story is the best one, but, you know, buy Bitcoin to reduce the debt. Uh, Republicans argue for fiscal responsibility and oppose this uh, point of higher taxes, which is understandable. The US faces a crisis in fiscal, that is for sure, and they really need to do something about it. Now, if we look at Bitcoin today, 
Now, according to Crypto uh, Compare, Bitcoin got up to nearly 70,000. The high was 69,974. And the low on this 24 hour chart was 65581. So Bitcoin slightly lower than that, but I'm not too worried about it because it is the end of the month. And strange things happen at the end of the month. Okay, people take tend to sell and take their profits, but I'm not saying to my clients at all to sell simply because there is no Bitcoin. Okay, now we've got more and more corporates buying Bitcoin. Meta Planet joins Bitcoin for corporate initiative, which means they're actually buying Bitcoin with their their corporate treasury holdings. Okay, uh, you know, less than a week they launched this. They said they're participating. They have something like about 218 units of Bitcoin uh, and they're really, you know, like a lot of corporates are starting to buy Bitcoin. That makes sense because the returns are insane. They also want to cooperate and help with the network of Bitcoin uh, and create, you know, all sorts of protocols and VIP access for clients. I think this is a super story. Uh, many people are adopting Bitcoin because the returns are insane and they can see what's happening with Bitcoin in terms of the ETFs, okay? BlackRock and Fidelity. Fidelity's been in the market for a long time. They were there before anyone else. So Metaplant uh, has been buying more Bitcoin. They bought another nearly 22 Bitcoin. They have now 225 Bitcoin. We also see the whales in any weakness are accumulating Bitcoin, and that's not surprising, Okay. Uh, you know, we've seen the U.S. government apparently had $2 billion from Silk Road, and they have been selling that at the moment with the current administration, but I think it's crazy. They should hold any Bitcoin they have, and they will later on probably. Uh, large wholesale whales are buying Bitcoin. That's not surprising. And, uh, you know, they're buying quite a bit of Bitcoin, okay, something like 4,500 units, okay? And that comes off the exchange. <clears throat> Don't forget that. Once the exchange has no Bitcoin, there's no Bitcoin to be had and you just have to pay more and more money. So we've seen four whales accumulate nearly 6,000 units of Bitcoin, which is a lot of money, okay? Now, many people are forecasting Bitcoin to get to the end of the year at least 100,000 uh, 100, or 130,000, and I'm a believer in that. By the end of the year, Bitcoin will be there. Now, <clears throat> a couple of stories about Ripple today. Ripple partners with Finna SPAC to accelerate blockchain innovation in Brazil. Brazil's a very large country. I think it has about 295 million people. The economy is terrible. The currency is terrible. And people are going into cryptocurrency. Not surprising, okay? Not surprising at all. Uh, they have teamed up with Venice back. It's the second time they've done this to increase blockchain acceleration uh, and to also increase the usability of cryptocurrency in Brazil, okay? They've sponsored two fintech companies uh, in terms of asset tokens, uh, in terms of payments and in terms of interoperability, right? This is the second time they've collaborated with Fensback. They previously worked on blockchain research with UFRJ and Polkadot. And this is a very good story for Ripple because they're going to countries where there's massive problem, okay, with corruption and everything. And, you know, clearly digital currency is the way to go. They're very strong, as you know, in digital payment infrastructure. And they're going to bring, bring growth more to network of, big, of Ripple, right? <clears throat> also, they're in um, Japan and Asia and everywhere else. Now, there's a big meeting coming up, apparently, uh, with the SEC and Ripple, and apparently that's on the 1st of August. That's why we see Ripple consolidating at around $0.60, cents and it's around 63 at the moment, okay? Uh, it's up 3% today, which is a good story, but people are expecting the meeting with the SEC, hopefully, to have some bullish news re-Ripple and maybe the SEC is done with them. It's a closed door meeting and it's scheduled, as I said, for August the 1st, which is a couple of days' time. Uh, you know, this regulatory development will impact XRP, no doubt, and maybe the SEC will fall on their sword, which they need to. Uh, people are starting to buy XRP and, and transfer it to their own private wallets, okay? So we'll just have to keep a very close eye on that. We only have 5,000 to 5% our investment portfolio number seven in XRP. But again, we've got to think what's going to outperform XRP. If something else is going to outperform it better, then maybe we'll be in that. Uh, also, Tron outpaces Ethereum in revenue despite Ethereum ETFs. That's why I'm really negative. Uh, Ethereum, the revenue is declining. Solano's revenue is higher than Ethereum's as well. And Tron and uh, Solano are much cheaper than Ethereum. Tron's only at 13 cents, people, right? Since July 23rd, 
Tron has consistently earned more revenue than Ethereum. At 1.42 million a day in the last week, they've generated nearly 9 million in network revenue, more than Ethereum. And you've got to ask yourself, why is um, Ethereum, you know, so high in price when, you know, TRX is so low in price and it's generating more trading than Ethereum and has more daily users and active users than Ethereum? You know, Tron has 200 million users and something like 20 million active users and Ethereum has about 850,000, right? Also, Solana is doing very well with PYUSD, which is a collaboration with PayPal. Apparently, it is doing very well. Copped a lot of flack early on, but their trading volume is very, very high and it's up 140% in the last 24 hours, right? Their circulating supply has increased by 230%. And, you know, this is an integration of uh, PYUSD in Solano's based decentralized uh, network, okay? And this is a great story for Solano, right? Um, Solano's blockchain, as you know, is very cheap, very fast, and ideal for commerce, does about 65,000 transactions per second. Many people, as I said, were very skeptical about PYUSD, but it certainly has defied predictions, okay? And again, Solano, like I mentioned, has overtaken Ethereum fees for the first time and forget and don't forget Solano basically uh you know was uh you know a, a later network than Ethereum right Ethereum's been around for about 10 years and I think Solano has been around for no longer than five right so it makes a big difference Solano's revenue is increasing because of all the minting of many tokens which people can do and I want to do a, an experiment on that one of my clients who's also an art uh he's an artist okay so obviously all these many tokens have really helped Solano. And uh, Solano certainly, it's a lot of bullish institutional investors as well as Ralph Wall that are buying Solano with their ears pent back, right? But I think there's also better opportunities like Chainlink. Now, also this story out there about Pepe Coin and Membi, uh, Mababi, which is the, I think he's a French soccer player, amazing soccer player, right? And people are looking at the memes because they can make a lot of money out of the memes, even though the community, uh, and but they do go viral and their social uh, social media community, right? So the meme uh, token has done very well because it aims to unite sports fans. Mababi wants to uh, give some of that away because he came from poverty. And uh, it's a question of what uh, meme token is going to do better than other tokens. Now, as you know, we're in a few of them. We're in Bonk, we're in Pepe. We're in Dodge and a few others, right? But I do like Pepe, uh, not Pepe coin, but Pepe's as such. So we keep an eye on those memes, even though they're social media. Now, Binance lawsuit, apparently the US has updated and amended the uh, Binance lawsuit. I found the fining of Binance was insane, okay? Binance got fined $7.9 billion. This is Chang Pang Zao who originally started the exchange in 2018 or 17, Bernard's. And the guy, the, the exchange is running so quickly and so fast and getting so many clients, they just couldn't keep up, you know, and they couldn't keep up with, uh, with, with people they had to employ, like 600 people, right? And I think it's very unfair what they did to Chang Pang Zao. They put him in jail for four months and fined him 7.9 billion. I think it's obscene. And, you know, that's where you've got to under, you know, the regulators, how do they work out their fines you know they say that things are security what profit did you make but it's just garbology right now apparently uh they are looking at Binance the change follows a court ruling that Binance is not a security and you're going to find this all over the place right the SEC might even have to give Binance back money with interest on top right uh now the SEC is turning around and saying some cryptocurrencies are not securities right like Solano Polygon and Binance they're just insane. They really need to do something about the SEC. So, you know, we have to see what happens here. The uh, SEC said Binance is US was a secondary, which is a joke. Now they're saying Solana, Cardano and Polygon are not securities. I wish they'd just wake up, fair income. Now they're saying Phil, Adam and San are still considered securities. Just mad, okay? Mad, mad and just using money for the uh, tax, uh, for the tax people, uh, people that are tax in America, right? Uh, of course, Binance disputes the SEC's claims about discovery agreements 
And, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see where that case goes. It could literally give Bernard's more money. Now, Tron, Justin's son, said uh, he hints at a bigger theory himself, and it's not surprising because Justin's son has bought a lot of air for him, and where he bought them, uh, he didn't. He hasn't made any money, right? He sent 810 to Blownix, which is a part of, and he probably is going to sell. He has amassed 361,000 units of Ethereum since February and June. Uh, the price since then has dropped by 10%, and I think he wants to sell Ethereum. He's probably got the same idea as me. I just think Ethereum is too, too high, even though he's lost money of $66 million. I think he will start a sell on Ethereum. It's too high for the revenue it's making, okay? It's as simple as that, and I don't like it because there's a lot of rhetoric out there, and even with my own studies, Ethereum is very centralised, okay? Now, something else I wanted to come uh, show you today is node staking, and I think it's really interesting. Rather than buying a node, you can actually start, uh, stake with node staking. And the interesting thing about this one is it offers everyone the same amount of staking. So all the staking is decentralized, unlike Ethereum, where you have large stakers uh, in Ethereum network, like 25% that will hold 25% of Ethereum supply. It's obscene because what it means is Ethereum is only for the wealthy. You need a minimum 33 Ethereum coins uh, to stake, right? But with node staking, it means that little people can stake, and that's the whole idea of cryptocurrency. It needs to be decentralized, and it means everyone ha no one has a power base in terms of more coin in the network. Everyone is treated equally, and that's the way it should be, and that is decentralized, and that's what we long for. So I thought this was quite interesting to make you aware of. Uh, it's an alternative node sales. It's cheaper. Yes, node sales have been very popular, but this staking uh, is a hybrid, right? Well, you don't need to buy a license. You don't need significant financial and technical investment. But with just staking, it actually allows people to participate rather than having to have 33 of Ethereum, right? Uh, it certainly reduces the barrier to entry because you need less. It's fair and transparent. It's decentralised. And I think it's a great story, right? Uh, Users can NFT to validate transactions. The process is very democratic. And each participant cannot dominate the network like one participant. I think it's much more exclusive. I think it's a better framework and it's more uh, democratised. Not that I'm saying to buy, you know, NI or anything else, but, you know, you can understand this. So, uh, you know, again, oh, I played that one, but, again, you can understand what I'm saying. So if we go to the next story. Uh Great story about Chainlink. Chainlink's revenue has increased 180%. Massive adoption for interoperability protocols and pricing oracles. Chainlink is so cheap for the revenue it's great getting. It is massive, right? It's earning revenue every day and it will continue to earn revenue every day. But when you look at the revenue, it's too cheap. The price of Chainlink at $13.58 or whatever. It's a joke, an absolute joke, right? Uh, it's also partnered with many, many cryptocurrencies that are using its technology. So they are clients of Chainlink, okay? And we can see the revenue of uh, Chainlink rising, you know, and some days they've had like 150000 or something. So it is a pretty good story. <clears throat> Very quick video today. Not a lot going on apart from the market. Very quiet. But, look, I'm ultra, ultra bullish, people. Ultra bullish. Let's see how it plays out. A lot going on. Uh, please look after yourself again. Look after your animals and I'll talk to you very soon. And thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you.